Hi, this is Tom Nelson. I am reading a presentation today for Suresh Bansal, who is not a native English speaker. So from here on out, this is his content. Introduction. Suresh Bansal is an independent researcher based in Punjab, India. For the past 42 years, his research has centered on investigating the fundamental origins of hydrocarbons in petroleum and the complete journey of simple hydrocarbons into complex hydrocarbon chemistry. His email ID is researcher at oilgenesis.org. The title of this presentation is New Balanced Hypothesis, Formation of Oil and Gas. The origin of oil and gas is a two-century debate. For two centuries, the source of oil and gas has been a topic of intense debate. Two primary theories have emerged. The biotic theory, which is widely accepted, uh, that means oil and gas originate from biomass or organic matter. They are formed through geological processes in sedimentary environments. Second theory is abiotic theory. Oil and gas originate from Earth's mantle. They are not derived from past biological sources. These two contrasting theories have sparked ongoing discussions with each side presenting compelling arguments. The biotic theory emphasizes the role of organic matter, while the abiotic theory suggests a non-biological origin. The debate surrounding the origin of hydrocarbons in petroleum has persisted for two centuries. The primary obstacle to resolving this enigma lies in the approach of advocates on both sides. The main hindrance is one. Proponents of biotic and abiotic theories focus solely on criticizing the non-scientific aspects of the opposing view, neglecting weaknesses in their own theories. Missed opportunity. If followers of both theories had scrutinized and addressed the non-scientific portions of their own perspectives, this mystery would have been solved a century ago. This resolution would have consequences. One, it would have unlocked new doors to understanding related geological and geochemical phenomena. Two, facilitated breakthroughs in energy exploration and resource management. Reflection here. The prolonged debate highlights the importance of, one, self-reflection and critique within scientific communities. Two, objective evaluation of evidence, regardless of theoretical allegiance. Three, collaborative problem solving to overcome entrenched perspectives. Call to action. It is time for advocates on both sides to, one, acknowledge and address weaknesses in their own theories. Two, engage in constructive dialogue, focusing on scientific merit. Three, pursue an integrated understanding of hydrocarbon origin. By doing so, we can, one, resolve this centuries-old mystery. Two, unlock new knowledge and innovations. Three, advance our understanding of the Earth's geological and geochemical processes. Now comes uh, my balanced hypothesis. Stage one, the Earth's internal hydrocarbon generation. The Earth's interior produces simple abiotic hydrocarbons which migrate to the atmosphere along with minerals, water vapor, and volcanic gases during suitable geological time intervals, mostly intervals of impact craters. Stage two, atmospheric hydrocarbon transformation. The Earth's atmosphere serves as a massive factory, recycling and transforming simple hydrocarbons into complex substances through UV rays, ultraviolet rays, cosmic rays, chemical reactions. A similar type of activity is happening today on Saturn's moon, Titan. According to the European Space Agency, there are hundreds of times more liquid hydrocarbons present on the surface of Titan in the shape of lakes and ocean. Stage three, sedimentation and source rock formation. Complex atmospheric hydrocarbon sediment, forming productive sedimentary source rocks. These rocks blend with minute quantities of biological or organic matter, masking their abiotic origin. I have given the name of this mixture of Lodge Pickle. 
mixture of abiotic atmospheric hydrocarbons and biomass debris on my late mother's name, Lage de Vie. Stage four, oil and gas liberation. At sufficient depth, heat, and pressure, oil window, hydrocarbons are liberated, filling global petroleum reserves. Stage five, exploration and discovery. To locate new oil and gas potential, it is essential to integrate additional signatures into current methods. Evidences denying the current fossil fuel theory. First one is misbalance of input and output. There is insufficient biological material to account for fossil fuel reserves. Uh, see Kucherov, 2013. The next one is well-preserved fossils. They contradict thermal degradation expectations, ex supporting pre-generated abiotic hydrocarbons that kept well-preserved and mummified these fossils. The next one is helium gas enrichment. Inherited gas helium can't be explained by fossil fuel theory. A hydrogen deficiency. Biological matter lacks hydrogen necessary for fossil fuel formation. Thermodynamic impossibility. Biological matter conversion to fossil fuels defies thermodynamic laws. Next one is depth discrepancy. The deepest fossils found 4,000 to 6,000 feet, while oil and gas deposits below 10,000 meters also. Uh, next one is extraterrestrial hydrocarbons. There are abundant liquid hydrocarbons on Titan where life has not been observed. Heavy metal traces, Peter Satmadi research. Nickel and vanadium ratios differ from biological sources similar to mantle rocks, challenges biological origin theory. Lack of transitional fossils. There's no clear evidence of gradual transformation from biological matter to fossil fuels. Inadequate heat and pressure. Insufficient thermal energy for biological matter transformation. Next one is rapid burial unlikely. Sedimentation rates too slow for rapid burial. The next one is oxidation obstacle. Biological matter oxidation would prevent fossil fuel formation. Six critical factors. One, well-preserved fossils in coal, source rocks, and oil shale. Two, stable isotope data. Three, optical active compounds. Four, biomarkers in nearly all oils. Five, expulsion of oils and gas from sedimentary source rocks. Six, a proven approach for discovering new oil reserves. A balanced model, reconciling the evidence. My hypothesis successfully integrates these critical factors, providing a comprehensive explanation for the genesis of oil and gas. By acknowledging and reconciling these scientific aspects, my balanced model offers a more accurate understanding of oil and gas formation. Implications. This breakthrough has significant implications for understanding Earth's geological history, improving oil and gas exploration methods, and also resolving the abiogenesis debate. Acknowledgement. I am pleased to have developed a hypothesis that reconciles these critical scientific factors, shedding new light on the origin of oil and gas. Conclusion. By integrating these key elements, our balanced model provides a comprehensive understanding of hydrocarbon genesis, bridging the gap between biogenic and abiotic theories. Quote, our model reconciles also evidence often used by advocates of fossil fuel theory. Biomarkers, stable isotopes, and optically active hydrocarbons. Integrating these elements, our balanced model explains hydrocarbon origins, reconciling biogenic and abiotic theories. Thank you.